in love with Pat's two cents. Another verse or two from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And what I want to say before I get into God's word is we don't realize how toxic, how dangerous, how deadly the word envy can be when it's lodged in a heart, especially when the heart doesn't even know it. That makes it even worse. Now, I'm going to read this. And remember, I was going to read from Webster Dictionary. Webster's is going to help me define envy to the T because that's what we're going to deal with all the little components of envy yeah listen to this then i'm going to tell you a little bit of, of my business from my past this is pat's two cents coming up after this hold on to your seats y'all it's going to be a rough ride 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 and 5. That's it. We're going to stop right there. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Yeah. Now, this is what I see in a lot of relationships. Some of you are right there, right now. Pat's two cents. You get in these relationships and you think, if the person has a hardness about them, you're taking it upon yourself now to bring them around and show them how beautiful and wonderful your love is so that they will become beautiful and wonderful in love as well. Huh? Don't even fool yourself, baby. I'm going to let you hear from Webster. We're going to dig into this word. Let's start with the word envy, shall we? Mm -hmm. Pang of envy, jealousy, covetousness, resentment. How many times have you felt like your partner resented you? And you're wondering why? Hello. Bitterness, discontent, the green-eyed monster. Now, we're going to go beyond all of that. We're going to take you down the road to jealousy and the green-eyed monster. These words are going to take you down a maze. This is going to trip you out, but we're going to come out on the other end. Listen, jealousy goes back to envy, covetousness, resentment. Mm -hmm. bitterness spite when was the last time they did something to you or said something to you for spite mm. and it goes right back to the green eyed monster seems like we're going full circle now doesn't it let's go to the green eyed monster shall we yeah you gotta hear this all right jealousy personified now, how much more do you need to know but that? Hmm. Yeah. Jealousy personified. How you like them apples? Now, when you deal with, some of you live with a green-eyed monster right now. You live with a green-eyed monster who also breaks this rule. They break the rule uh, that says in verse 5 doth not behave itself unseemly now this is what love does not do love is not a green eyed monster love doesn't is not jealous not resentful not bitter hmm? not spiteful not envious and it does not behave itself unseemly hmm. you ever seen people just act ugly just act ugly. 
seeketh not her own. You know, we're not talking her as in a woman. They're just using that like they talk about a car as a she or whatever. When the Bible talks about seeking not her own, here's another phase to that. You ever see a person, everything has to be their way? Or they act like this monster of a brat? They literally become a pouting brat. And they are hell to live with. They have this unholy, unquietness. I mean, this unholy quietness where, you know, okay, they're upset about something. And they're really making it known. They're sour. And you're sitting there trying to love this thing. And all they're doing is using all that to manipulate you. Because this isn't about love with them. They got you thinking so. They use the word love because that word manipulates when it's insincere. Listen, have you ever dealt with a person that was so easily provoked? When it says seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked. Well, my goodness, what do you think that means? Thinketh no evil. Listen, I'm going to share this with you. I, years ago when I was in my early 20s, I was shacking with a guy. This before I was saved, so don't look at me cockeyed. I was unsaved for 27 years. Mm, anyway, at this point, I was about 21 years old. 20, about 20, 21. 20, whatever. I was shacking with this guy. Short-lived about a year or so. And I started seeing the writing on the wall. Now, when the guy was not drinking, marvelous, sweet funny, adorable, cute. But when that Budweiser got in him, the green-eyed monster started showing his ugly head. <sighs> and you're like, well, where did that come from? Why? What are you upset about? Insecurities and jealousy will drive your mate to insanity and I mean it gets crazy up in here now listen this man was so insecure which I didn't even realize until he got drunk a few times too many one time he literally asked me why didn't you tell me you wanted some relatives of his that happened to be men that were my age. I looked at them boys like they were little boys, little undeveloped boys, spoiled brats. Because he was 12 years older than I was, which I didn't think anything of, he was self-conscious about it. And the alcohol made him jealous of me when I wasn't looking at anybody else. It was dumb. But see, alcohol does this. Now, here's another thing. We got into an argument. And it and it says here, charity is not easily provoked. We got into an argument when he was drunk. And it was we were trying to clear some things up. But the alcohol inflamed him. He made one he made one mistake and that mistake was he grabbed me by the shoulders and he was hollering in my face like he wanted to Ugh! when I saw that in him I said give me one more drunk night and I'm out of here and what that meant was the next time he was drunk he would be sleeping so hard, which he always did, that I would be able to slip out the back, Jack, make a new plan, Stan. You don't need to be coy, Roy. You just listen to me. Now you hop on the bus, Gus. You don't need to discuss much. Just drop off the key, Lee, and get yourself free. And that's exactly what I did while he was laying on that bed in a drunken stupor sleep. And I sang that song 
while I pack my stuff to go. Now, what I want to say to you is you have to know the warning signs. Love is not love. If someone can take their bare hand or weapon, whatever, and strike you with it, that is not an indication of love. Now, they can come up with excuses because controlling people know how to manipulate. And they can give you rationalizations and explain and give you all kind of excuses as to why they're just so messed up and there's no way they would hurt you. They don't know what got into them. Must have been that green-eyed monster, you think? Yeah. But the bottom line is that green-eyed monster keeps getting into them. And as long as you stick around, that green-eyed monster is going to cause them to do something to you that may be irreversible. Do you want to take that chance? Are you that desperate and that lonely that you will let them wreck your life for a little piece, a little crumb of what they call love? Just because they use the word love and you're so needy for somebody to love you. My God, go to God. That's where the love is. He won't slap you down and put you down in public. Because I will not deal with anybody that thinks they have a right to even put their hand on me. Mm -mm. That's as far as it went. It was never going to go any further because I wasn't going to stick around to find out like some of you do. And some of you stick around so long that you go for the hype. There's the honeymoon period. You fuss, break, what is it? Break up to make up. That's all we do. First you love me. Then you hate me. That's the game for fools. You be a fool if you want to. Break up to make up. So you, they slap you upside the head. They kick you in your ribs. They knock you silly. Knock you in the next Friday. Then you're sitting up in the hospital for a week. But you won't press charges. Because you love him. And you love him her and she said she loves you even though she went upside your head with a frying pan and she makes some silly excuse about oh i was thinking about the time i was raped and i don't know what came over me <laughs> yeah, come on you're not that stupid you know why they do it to you they know they can they know that you're not going anywhere because you think, you're so convinced that you need them. And they see needy, needy, needy written across your forehead and across your chest as your heart goes to pucka, to pucka, to pucka, to pucka. I'm so needy. I'm so needy. Love me. Love me. Oh, please love me. I'll do anything you want. I'll wag my tail for you. I'll kiss your behind. I'll lick up your dust. I'll do whatever you want. I'll even take a punch to show you how dedicated I am to you because I love you. Oh, stop it. Help us, Lord, please. You don't have to be that desperate. God has someone out there with the kind of love you need. Tailor-made for you. Just like my husband was tailor-made for me. And I was tailor-made for him. We both had the kind of love that we both wanted. We both needed. We both could enjoy. Not endure. But we enjoyed each other's love. When was the last time you enjoyed some love somebody gave you? Really enjoyed it. Free. 
not walking on eggshells. Oh, I better not do this because he'll be angry. Or oh, I better not do that because she'll be jealous. I better not speak to them or they'll, he'll pull me back. I better not go and hang with my girlfriends because he'll be mad. I better not go and do anything too much with the, with the kids because she'll think I love the kids more than I love her. That is bondage, baby. You don't worry about going to jail. You're already in it. You got to break free while you can. Let the chips fall where they may right now. Get your behind as the word, as, as the kid, uh, the old expression. It's an old cliche. Get your heels to clicking and hit that door. While you got some heels to click. I know I give that warning all the time because it seems like there are so many of you that will not take heed. You would rather take another punch, another kick, another knife wound and risk being shot rather than be alone. You'd rather live in horror than to live in a little uncomfortable fear of the unknown. My. Lord, I feel for you. All right, let me stop because I'm not trying to fuss at you. I'm trying to help you see God has so much more for you than somebody that's always getting upset at a split second and popping you because they can. Mm. Okay, that's it for this one because this can go on all night long. This is a never-ending subject. But I've shared with you what Webster said. I share with you what God's word says. Please remember, when they do any of that stuff, they do not love you. <laughs>